right, kiddos, welcome to another rendition of At Home Art with Mr. Smith. I've got myself all of the materials that I'm going to need. Oh, missing one thing. Boom, a straight edge. Straight edge, you call it a ruler, I call it a straight edge because that's really what I'm going to be using it for. Don't really need to do a lot of measuring, but I'll tell you a little bit about how you can use it if you really want to make some exact lines. But today we are doing op art. Optical illusion art using these things and optical illusion art is is like art that kind of makes your eyes go Whoa, it looks like it's kind of moving or doing something weird So really in order to show you this first I want to give you a little introduction on what op art is so you know what? Let's take a look at that first And here it is This is what it looks like if you spell out the word op art o-p-a-r-t and what it really means is optical illusion art, or art that makes your eyes play tricks on you. Let me show you some examples. I know, pretty cool, right? You know, op art is made to make you think that the image might be moving in some way. It's playing tricks on your eyes. If you see that black and white checkerboard one, I think you can agree that that one looks like it's sinking into the picture. It's like going away from us. The one on the right, the one that has colorful cubes kind of going all over directions, it really plays tricks on your eyes based on the use of color and the use of lines. Op art can be black and white or it can be colorful. The black and white on the left again really shows movement. It's a very simple idea but it looks like something's bulging from up underneath, like a, like a ball is trying to poke through a piece of paper. And the one on the right, this one, feels like all those cubes either are upside down or the right side up, they go in, they go out. You can't really tell what direction those cubes are going. Now, some famous artists of op art or optical art, one of them is Victor Vasarely. And Victor Vasarely was really good at playing tricks with our eyes, like all the op artists are. You can see that bulging ball thing that he did again. And you can also see those cubes that kind of play on each other like that. Underneath is Bridget Riley. Bridget Riley was very famous, not only for her black and white prints that you can see on the left, where it looks like those little triangles. You just barely, uh, barely move the triangle just a little bit and repeat it over and over again, and it looks like those things are moving, like in a wave. But she also used color in very interesting ways, too, as you can see on that image on to the right, where there's a lot of diagonal lines that kind of look like cubes that got askewed. Jesus Raphael on the very right, he was a master of using big, long lines that kind of crossed each other very slightly. And when you cross lines very slightly, it can look like they vibrate. These are some student examples of the way that we can make op art and really start practicing how to use lines in very intentional ways. That means putting a line on page on purpose. It has a job to do. And so each line has a very important job to do or important task to make the viewer, who's the person that's going to be looking at our art, feel like our art might be moving in some way. Here are some student examples, like I said, and you can see that purple and yellow one is a lot like the Victor Vasarely image that we saw. That black and white one with the circles looking like a checkered board behind it, Bridget Riley would really be loving that one because that was very similar to the kind of work she did. And Jesus Raphael loved using lines up and down and crisscrossing back and forth, just like the other ones. How cool was that? There's some pretty impressive things in there. And I'm hoping that you saw kind of towards the end of that video or that section of the video where there was a, an op art piece where there was a circle in the middle. And the circle looked like it was blowing up like a bubble coming out of like a checkers board. You know what? That's what we're going to learn how to do today. That's why I need something to make a good circle, just a piece of tape. You can find a lid or something and your straight edge and of course just your pencil. Now, if you really want, you can actually color it in using some markers or crayons. I'm actually going to probably go grab some crayons in a little bit here, but uh, you can actually just use your pencil if you want to color it in too. So let's get started. Let's make some op art together. Boom. I'm going to put the circle right in the middle, going to hold it down nice and snug, so all I have to do is just 
draw my circle around it just like that skidoosh I've got a circle now the next thing I need to do is just make my checkerboard lines but you have to think about where the circle is and we're not gonna make straight lines across the circle because that could mess things up but I will start with my horizontal lines what kind of lines horizontal you got it horizontal means straight across side to side horizontal lines now I'm gonna have to start being careful I'm gonna try to keep my horizontal lines the same distance from each other but this time I'm gonna lift my pencil once I get to the circle stop and start very important that you do that or else you're gonna kind of start messing up that optical illusion you're gonna want that op art to pop out at you that that circle needs to pop out like a bubble I'm gonna stop again start again I'm gonna speed up the process now so you can see what I'm doing all right kiddos now what I'm gonna do is just flip it over so I can keep going across but it'll make our vertical lines but I, I don't like drawing lines up and down I actually like going across so this is just how mr. Smith likes to do it but you can figure it out on your own I'm gonna speed up the process so you can see exactly how this works all right we are finished here we've got the square pattern going the, the little uh, like checkerboard pattern going and you know honestly you're probably looking at it go that kind of looks cool it looks like that circles totally hovering over the square pattern that's its own optical illusion in and of itself but now we've got to do something to this to make it look like it's a square this is where we're gonna bring in curved lines let me show you how this works I'm gonna take a the the my pencil and I'm gonna start at the very top center of this little ball here and I'm actually going to make kind of like what would look like an eyeball and it's got to be a slow curve a slight curve and it's gonna look like a cat's eye and since I'm a big nerd and I love Lord of the Rings I actually like to say it looks like the eye of Sauron right there totally the eye of Sauron oh. But next, next what we're going to do is we want to keep this pattern going, but we always want to start at that top and end at the bottom. So I'm going to go like this again, and I'm going to make another line that curves down. It's almost like we're going to make like a globe. And I'm going to keep going here, and I'm going to make those lines get a little closer to each other too each time. The last one's going to be in between that. There you go. We're starting to see that curve shape now. It's no longer Sauron's eye or a cat's eye. It's now starting to look like a globe or something uh, like a like a three-dimensional orb. Got to do the same with the other side. I'm going to speed it up here so you guys can see the process. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing I did by rotating the page, and there's just the, the same pattern again. I want to start with the cat eye thing or the eye of Sauron and keep moving that around. You're going to start seeing how it turns into like a checkers board. So I've got a dot here and a dot here. It's going to start there and end there. Here we go. I'm going to speed it up so you can see the process from here. All right, we're all done. Kiddos, we've got ourselves something that looks like an orb that's popping out of the page. The last thing I want to do, and this is going to take most of the time, is to just color in all of the squares, making all the squares um, uh, their own pattern of color. And I'd like to do it in a checkers board pattern, where I skip every other one to give it the same color. Now you can do two colors if you want, you can just do one color if you want, but what I would recommend is maybe sticking with one color or two colors for now, that way you can really see how dynamic that shift is between this flat surface and this thing that looks like it's an orb that comes out from it. Let's see what we can do.
that is looking pretty cool. Now I'm going to finish this up and I'll speed it up again. And I'm going to actually go back over all of these lines with a black marker because it'll look really, really cool. And then I'm going to actually try to do a little bit of shading and even maybe make a little bit of a shadow where that orb is just to make it look even more 3D and give it more of that effect. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to speed it up again. If you want, I hope you get started already. And uh, um, yeah, let me show you what I'm going to do next. Here we go. kiddos that doesn't look too bad and I hope you have fun making this remember you guys this will take some time so be patient be nice to yourself and you'll have something that looks pretty darn cool I think so thanks for watching you guys thanks for coming in and still getting your learning on and making sure you're making your art you guys take care keep learning and we'll see you next time on at home art with mr. Smith bye bye